Welcome, my name is Shelby Isom. I'm a PhD candidate at West Virginia University, and thank you for coming to my talk entitled Emplacement of Silicic Lavas, Pervasive Brittle Tensile Deformation Above a Ductile Core. The upper surface of silicic lavas are characterized by regularly spaced arcuate ridges and troughs, or ogives. The figure to the left shows an aerial image of the then active Cordon Calle lava in Chile. The authors identified ogives and have them marked here as thin black lines occurring to the north and to the south of the vent. In the right, we have an aerial image of big obsidian flow in Oregon. Authors also identified ogives here to the north of the vent based off of the accurate shapes and color differences seen on the surface. The common interpretation is that silicic lavas are analogous to pohoihoi ropes on mafic lavas and thus are caused by ductile compression of the upper surface of the flow. This image here is showing the arcuate um, folds of the pohoihoi ropes on uh, lava in Tenerife being compared to the ogive seen on Big Glass Mountain in California. This is what the top of a silicic lava looks like when you're standing on it and looking across. You see an ocean of gray talus with few black blocks speckled in between. That gray talus is mainly comprised of finely vesicular pumice, an image to the right showing the gray porous texture. Finely vesicular pumice is characterized by having 26 to about 30% porosity, a bulk density of about 1670 to 1750 kilograms per meters cubed, and a total weight percent water content of about 0.23. The black blebs are obsidian um, that have a porosity of about 1%. A bulk density between um, 2,300 and 2,350 kilograms per meters cubed, and a total weight percent water from 0.14 to about 0.22. As a part of my dissertation, I am using Obsidian Dome in California as a case study to test the interpretation that the upper surface of silicic lavas are in ductile compression during emplacement. Obsidian Dome is one of three of the youngest domes erupted in the Inyo chain, as you can see here in this inset map. It's about 700 years old, and as seen in the LiDAR image, was relatively unimpeded during eruption to the east, being able to flow into a paleo channel and across a paleo slope. In the past, researchers have identified ogives on the upper surface of Obsidian Dome in the southern portion, which you can see highlighted here in yellow. This image here shows a cross section through the ogives in the southernmost portion of Obsidian Dome. The location that the image was taken is indicated by the red star in the inset map. Like the first image we saw, this shows a brech highly brecciated surface of finely vesicular pumice with large boulders being cut by fractures and infills of talus. Creating a digital field sketch and overlaying it on the previous photo allows us to zoom in on specific morphologies and structures in this area. Looking to the north at the horizon, you can see the gently undulating surface that has been detected by aerial imagery. Orthogonal joint sets cut the large coherent boulders of finely vesicular pumice that have then been split by mode one tension fractures. This next image was taken in the northeast part of Obsidian Dome, looking south towards the Ogive region. Like the previous images, we see chaotic blocks of finely vesicular pumice littering the surface with intermittent blebs of obsidian. Creating another field sketch and overlaying it on the previous photo, we can again start to zoom into the different morphologies and structures seen in this ogive area. We see the ridges and troughs along the horizon, as well as these pillar shapes that dominate the background um, in this area. These are also known as Sirocs. 
Finely vesicular pumice angular boulders also litter the surface and again are cut by these mode one tension fractures. Now we're going to zoom in to smaller scale structures seen at Obsidian Dome. Cracks are ubiquitous and occur in all lithologies at Obsidian Dome. They're identified by planar fractures and generally are formed in orthogonal joint sets as seen in the several images provided. The fracture depths are less than one meter and they're generally created in a V shape. Outgassing pathways of tuffocyte generally occur within cracks or are cross cut by cracks. For instance, this photo in the bottom, we see ash to lapilli sized clast annealed onto a obsidian surface with um, mode one tension fractures cutting the surface and the lapilocyte. We also see tuffocyte veins in uh, flow banded obsidian, um, either cross cutting or in the photo to the right um, in a line with the flow bands. These tuffocyte to lapilocyte veins are found in all lithologies across the obsidian dome. Clefts are larger than cracks. Again, they occur in all lithologies and they're planar fractures. They're V-shaped, as we can see here. Um, our field assistant is sitting in a cleft and generally have fracture depths of one to five meters. Crevasses are the, one of the largest structures at Obsidian Dome, defined by fracture depths of greater than five meters. In the image to the left, we see our field assistant here, standing next to a large crevasse indicated by the red arrow. Like clefts and cracks, crevasses also have a V-shape to them, and they incur in all lithologies. In the image to the right, the same field assistant is standing on the top, looking down into a crevasse indicated by the red arrow. This crevasse actually extended several meters down into the uh, past the upper surface of the lava and standing over it you could feel an upwelling of cold air. Crease structures are the largest structures at Obsidian Dome and unlike cracks, clefts, and crevasses they have a flared shape defined by these curvaplanar fracture surfaces that extend from a planar fracture. The planar fracture in this image is trending about almost exactly north-south, indicated by the red dash line, and thus we have a curve of planar fracture surface to the east and a curve of planar fracture surface to the west. The images at the top are showing each curve of planar fracture surface. So the one to the top left shows the western curve of planar fracture surface, and the one to the top right shows the eastern curve of planar fracture surface. Indicated by the white arrows are these mirror images of sinusoidal, almost vertical flow bands seen on both limbs of the crease structure. If the planar fracture associated with the crease structure is also a mode one ten tension fracture like our cracks, clefts, and crevasses, we can then restore each limb of the crease structure back together. However, since both limbs have a curved element to them, we have to rotate the limbs during restoration. Thus, we have both brittle and ductile deformation present during crease structure formation. So, so far our observations at Obsidian Dome are that the upper surface is dominated by fractured finely vesicular pumice. Fractures are at multiple scales and that there is no evidence that the surface morphology is controlled by folding. Based off the observations collected at Obsidian Dome, we can construct a simple interpretive cartoon to illustrate what was happening on the surface of this silicic lava during its emplacement. At T1, the ductile obsidian core is driving emplacement, while the FVP surface is dominated by tensile fracturing. At T2, you have continued extension from the vent to the margins as the lava is emplaced. Mode 1 tension fractures continue to develop in the brittle zone of FVP accompanied by tuffocyte venting. These large scale ridges and troughs or ogives created by the tensile fracturing are what is now detected by aerial imagery. 
At T3, we have even further extension during emplacement and the largest fractures begin to occur at the surface. And only these deepest fractures penetrate through the brittle ductile transition to create crease structures. So our conclusions are that ogives are fractured bound ridges and troughs and can be understood as a part of a continuum from small tensile fractures to very large tensile fractures that cross that brittle ductile transition. Thank you.